Tyson. Hey, Bob. How are you? Good. Get, getting ready to come over to your side of the water. Good, good. Welcome to my world, Bob. Right, good. I'm looking forward to it. I've been in your world for a long time. Now you're coming across the pond to see me. I know. <laughs> I, I was with some Vegas people last night, and they're be bemoaning the fact that they're not seeing you over here in this upcoming fight. But I told them that you belong to England as much as you do to the United States. And we're going to break some records, Bob. We're going to break all records in the UK yeah, with this Bob, uh, massive Bob, game. Bob, let me ask you yeah. about that. Let me ask you about that, Bob. Ali thinks to, uh, I, I believe, was the largest attendance-wise fight that you've promoted in your career. And if this one, I mean, yeah. 80,000 in the first day, possibly 94, yeah. would this be the largest this is fight the attendance? Fight. The, previously, the biggest, from an attendance standpoint, that I promoted was uh, uh, John Tate and Harry Kotsia in South Africa, in Pretoria, 82,000 people. Wow. So this is set at this point in your career to break that record and to do it with this man, Tyson Fury and Dillian White. What I mean, who, who better to you, right? That is correct, because only Tyson could bring out an outpouring of fans like we've seen uh, here in the in the UK. It's going to be no, an I'm, epic. I'm bringing I'm bringing sexy back. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course we, we could chat for days, but we have a ton of media that is on the call. This is a media conference call, so I wasn't I'd aware. Like I thought it was just us. I mean. You know, you and I've done this once, twice before with just the two of us and nobody, and nobody else uh, at a press conference. So we have had the experience, but we will now get to all the media that is waiting. Um, if you would like to ask a question to Frank, to Bob, to Tyson, and then, as I mentioned, Dillian White will be joining us after uh, on the call as well. Uh, either raise your hand or message Evan Korn and we will get you into the queue as we Get prompted for our first question. Uh, we're going to go to Dan Raphael. Dan, your, your question and to who it's for. Hey, thank you very much, Christina. Uh, my first question is for Tyson. Are you there, Tyson Fury? Hi, Dom. Hope you hey, well, buddy. You? I'm doing great. It's good to talk to you, Tyson. I wondered if you could just uh, give me your perspective on uh, what it means to you and the significance to you to be fighting at home for the first time after having your last several fights and making a very big name for you around the world and in America uh, in your last three fights with Wilder, but now going home finally, and not only going home, but doing so in not just any old event, but as has been discussed, what, you know, what will probably break the record for the biggest attendance in the history of British boxing. Yeah, it's absolutely fantastic, uh, Dan. You know, I've been on the road since 2018. Um, I've been in some tough fights around the world, and it's finally good to come back to break all records on UK soil in such a, such a long time um, to be fighting at the National Stadium in, in Wembley, London. Uh, it just shows you how much the fans support me and and um, I'm overwhelmed, like I said earlier, I'm overwhelmed with the support that I've been showing the last, since the comeback really, since the second career. It's been absolutely fantastic and I just want to say a massive thank you to every person who bought a ticket who made this event possible because not only me and the promoters and the, the opponents made this event happen. Without the fans, then there would be no event. That's a fact. So we owe a massive thank you to everybody who spent their hard-earned money on a ticket and we're going to entertain like uh, nothing we've ever seen before. So I'll ask you this, Tyson. Are you, uh, first of all, you know, you're not going to be facing Deontay Wilder for the first time in a while. So that's got to be uh, a, a change of pace for you. If you could discuss yeah. finally facing somebody different, but also how, how surprised are you that there was, I mean, I knew there'd be a big crowd, but are you a little bit surprised that it's that big, that they that they have welcomed you with this much open arms and it's become this big of an event and not just, you know, a good, solid, big time heavyweight title fight, but the biggest of all time? Yeah, um, um, I'm not surprised because I, I knew how um, how much support I'd been getting over social media and, and fan mail and stuff. Um, I knew how much people have appreciated the, the comeback and the mental health um, return and all that. So I wasn't surprised, but to sell Wembley out in one in like a few hours, that was uh, it was crazy for me. And it was uh, really happy times for me and my family. 
not not only because of the uh, the fight that got made with me and Dylan there on all British Showdown, but like I say, for all these people to to show the love that I've been shown in this uh, in this massive event, it's absolutely fantastic. And to be home back in back in England, the capital city Wembley, um, it, it's fantastic. I can't I can't really say much more than it's I'm overwhelmed and it's absolutely fantastic to be a part of this massive event it's going to be a great uh, a great night of boxing and a real real show as we always do thank you dan up next uh jeremy harridges jeremy go ahead hi tyson um thank you for taking the time i know that you've talked about the possibility of retirement some people within your circle have said that's not true where are you in in your mind with the idea of retirement at this moment well to be honest with you, I'm only thinking about Dylan White at this moment. I'm not thinking about retirement. Um, that'll all come after I've had a fight. You know, we'll think about what's going to happen and what the future holds for me. Uh, at the minute, I've got a massive task in Dylan. A lot of people are, are underestimating Dylan White, but not me. Um, I give the guy all the respect he's deserved throughout the training camp. I've been training since January. I've been breaking all records in the gym. I've been feeling good, looking good. Um, so yeah, I've not underestimated this guy. I've given him, I've given him the respect that I did Deontay Wilder and everybody else. So um, I really, really have trained well and I'm prepared very good for this fight. So it's uh, I'm looking forward to it. You before the fight with Deontay Wilder, you certainly had your words with each other, but you always said he was the second best heavyweight to you. Where yeah. do you think Dillian White falls in line there? I think Dylan's definitely a top five heavyweight for sure. Um, He's definitely in the top five heavyweights. He's he's the number one ranked WBC contender. Um, like everybody knows, he's been the mandatory challenger for like 147 years. Um, so yeah, he, he deserves his shot. He's getting his shot at the title. And, and that's it. You know, there's not much more we can say. Dylan's definitely a top five heavyweight. And if he beats me, he'll be ranked number one. So all to play for. Thank you so much, Jeremy. Andy's up next. Andy... Here will Andy. Tyson, can you hear me? Yeah. So, all right. Tyson, how are you doing? I'm good, mate. Good stuff. Um, so I was just wondering, obviously, throughout your career, we've seen you boxing various ways, whether it be orthodox, southpaw, on the back foot, coming forwards, getting rough, getting involved. To counteract what you feel Dillian's best at, how do you feel you'll approach the fight to be successful against him? We'll make that decision as soon as the first bell goes. So it's up to Dylan, really. Whatever he wants to do, then we'll accommodate him. Because that's what good champions do. We, um, we adapt to the situation, the environment that we're in. Dyson, I'm also just one more. It's also interested to know, you know, throughout your career, you've been used to kind of, especially recently, those big fight build-ups where you've had interactions with your opponent. Granted, in the third Wilder fight, Deontay wasn't as forthcoming as what maybe people would have thought. Do you feel like you've had, you know, does it feel like it's as big a fight to you that going in with Dillian as what it could be if he had been more involved in the build-up, if he had maybe turned up to the announcement press conference and what have you? Um, I don't think it uh, really matters, to be honest, because if the fighters speak a lot or they don't, it doesn't really matter when they get in the ring. Uh, after that first bell goes, it doesn't matter what he said, what I said. It's all down to the fists and the game plans and who does what on the night. So whether, whether the opponent wants to talk a lot or they don't, I know it's a big fight. We sold 94,000 tickets. So um, we'll, uh, we're definitely going to put a show on and I'm looking forward to a massive, uh, massive night of boxing. Andy, thank you. thank you. Up next, Danny Flexen. Danny? Hey, Tyson, how you doing? How you doing, big Dan? I'm good, mate, I'm good. Um, why do you think Dillian's now changed his mind about participating in the pre-fight media stuff? Why do you think now's the time that he's decided to get involved? Um, I think fight week and um, everyone's excited. He's done his training. He's, he took himself away in Portugal for the full fight camp. Um, he lives over there, so he's been just keeping himself to himself and he's been doing his training, focusing on that. So now the training must be finished. He's um, he's interacting into the fight week and, and doing his bit, playing the part. We all have a part to play. Does any part of you miss the kind of back and forth that you get at a traditional press conference between the two of you? You, you often get the better of fighters in that context. 
Um, not really, because it was only announcement press conference. It wasn't the actual press conference for the fight. Mm. Uh, I'm sure that the, the fight week press conference, they'll uh, we'll be talking to each other then. You know, the, the first initial press conference wasn't really a, a big thing. It was months away from the the fight, and, and both fighters had to go into training camps for the whole time. Um, so it didn't really mean much, to be fair, anyway. But it, it was what it was. I, I thought I, I handled it pretty good myself on my own, single-handedly. Sold out Wembley Stadium on me. Uh, did do a bad job, to be fair. Do you get anything from the face-offs? Because there's been a lot of talk about whether he'll participate in a face-off at the presser or the weigh-in. Do you take anything from the face-offs with your opponents? Not really, to be fair. It's all, it's all typical boxing stuff, you know. It's What do we call it? Um, it's like what boxers do. They stand up, they look each other in the face, they get head-to-head. It's all the old cliche, isn't it? Oh, don't look at me. Whoever looks away first is a pussy and all that sort of stuff. You know, it's... Oh, you shove me, I shove you, I grab him by the throat. I actually think that fighters should be should have a massive sanction put on them by the boards when they start acting up at uh, press conferences and um, and weigh-ins, They're grabbing each other by the throat for no intentions of actually doing anything. Because they think that's what sell tickets. They think, like, if I get up at a press conference and grab a guy by the throat lightly, then, oh, that's what sells. But that's not what sells. People do this today because they can't talk. They've got zero talking ability. So they think that grabbing a guy's T-shirt is going to help sell a fight and get people interested. But it doesn't. It's actually pathetic. Let me grab this guy's T-shirt. Me and Sugar Hill was actually talking about this recently. Like, let me just run off the stage and try and hit somebody or, or grab a guy by the throat. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's a professional sport. We're all adults here. We're not kindergarten, school children. Um... And the more I think about it, the more it makes sense for these um, the border control of the different countries to act because um, I think it's out of order, all the, uh, the, the, the childish behaviour around adult sporting events. Thank you, Danny. Good questions. Uh, we have Charlie Parsons up next. Charlie? Tyson, how are you? Thank you for your time. All right, Mosh, how are you? Good, mate. Good. You started your career knotting a marina on the undercard of Carl Froch, a man who also, as we all know, boxed at Wembley. Um, yeah. You go forward next week. You break the record attendance for Wembley. When you look at how your there, career, my boy. when you look at how your career is unfolded and obviously still unfolding now, um, how yeah. proud are you? You know, you go from the undercard of a man who boxed at that stadium to breaking records at that stadium for the World Heavyweight Championship. It's been a fantastic journey, you know. Um, it's been a long, hard road, and and the Lord knows it has been. It's been tough. It's been a lot of left and right turns, and and I'm just I'm so happy that the way it's all gone. I've had a great career. Um, I've been I've been in England. I've been I've been every different champion there is to be, every single world champion there is to be. I boxed at MGM, T-Mobile, Staples Centre, Madison Square Garden, the MEN Arena. And now I'm boxing at Wembley Stadium. Does it get any better than that? I don't think so. I think it's been an absolutely fantastic career. 13 going on 14 years career. Stayed unbeaten throughout my campaign. Box the most difficult fighters on my day. And um, and I just keep going, don't I? Just keep going. Just keep rolling on. And speaking of rolling on, I know we have nearly 100 media members on this call. We appreciate your patience again. Uh, you can raise your hand or message privately to Evan Korn to try to get your question in here with Tyson while we still have him. And again, stay on the call. When Tyson is done, we will bring in Dillian White. Gareth, I guess I don't even need to say your last name. You're, you're like Madonna, right? You just go by one name. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, to, uh, this is Gareth. <laughs> I could see that. I, I, I Russell. With the friggin' sunglasses. In the evening, <laughs> <laughs> um, it is evening, but it is sunny. Um, Tyson, can I ask you, um, do you enjoy the distraction from this point onwards? And what what is the biggest distraction for you in fight week as you're preparing mentally for, a, and again, a very important, maybe the most important fight of your career? Yeah, um, I enjoy the build-up to the fights. You know, it's show business, isn't it? This is what I was built for. Um, I really do enjoy all the hard work's been done, training's been done, um, and I really enjoy the build-up to the fight, the big fight weekend. Everybody's excited. Everybody's got the jitters. Who's going to win? Can't wait. Are you watching it on Saturday night? All the lads around the pub, all the lads in the building. 
it's fantastic. I absolutely love all the press, the press conferences, the head-to-heads. The whole fight week's amazing for me. It's always been an amazing experience. And I'm actually privileged to be a part of something that I'm, I'm good at and that I enjoy, the build-up to a massive fight. For me, it's not It's not like, oh, I'm going to the guillotine, I'm going to have a fight. It's like, damn, I'm going to be on TV. And it's, it's, just, it's just amazing. I'm just there. Uh, I'm really happy to be a part of getting paid for a job that I absolutely love to do. Um, and I think when you're in that position in your life, if you, you get paid for something that you love to do, you probably do it for free anyway, then you're in a fantastic position. And uh, it, it's, been, it's been an amazing, uh, amazing roller coaster journey, and I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change it for the world. Uh, and Tyson, hand on heart now, when the bell rings on Saturday night, St George's Day, Wembley Stadium, we're all there, 94,000 people, millions watching at home. When that bell rings in your mind, tell us what you're visualising you do to Dillian White. I don't really visualise anything. You know, a lot of fighters, they have tunnel vision and they envisage themselves winning fights or whatever. I just take it all in. I enjoy the moment because, you know, I'm obsessed with time. And I'm obsessed even more with moments in time. And as human beings, we only have a certain amount of moments in time. And these are my moments in time. And i got to take every second as a blessing. Because that's what it is. I've been blessed abundantly to be at this stage in my career and be in this position in my life. Um, and it's all, all time that you can never get back. Once it's passed, you never reverse that clock back. So we enjoy it. A lot of people look forward to what they're going to do after the fight. They're going to go out, they're going to go on holiday, spend time with the family, but not me. I like to enjoy every second I'm in that ring. And for me, it goes very quick. Even if it's a 12-round fight, it goes like two minutes. Um, I wish that I would do a fight for like a full day long, like a full day of fighting. That would be more my style. And just enjoy it. Just enjoy getting punched and punching someone in the face. Um, it's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> and for people who know what I'm talking about, they'll understand what I'm talking about. But from the average person looking in the thing, that's something a lunatic would say. But, you know, I really enjoy it all. I enjoy the fight game or else I still wouldn't be in it after all these years. I really do love it. And it's probably the only time I'm actually truly happy. I'm really happy when I'm in the boxing ring getting thumped in the face and, and, and you know, have to climb off the canvas or a big dramatic finish or a big dramatic something's happened in the fight. It's, it's all it's all very entertaining for me in my life and I really look forward to it all. Many more questions. There's hundreds of people on the call, so I'll pass it over. Thank you very much. No problem. Take it easy, guys. Tyson, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you. I mean, you finally get to prepare with sugar for someone other than Deontay Wilder. I know he's been excited about preparing for somebody new and getting you ready and then having a training camp too uh, there in the UK as opposed to Vegas. Yeah, for sure. Sugar's uh, Sugar's uh, really enjoying himself. He's had a fantastic time in this camp. He's in great shape. He's doing 100 press-ups a day. <laughs> he really is enjoying it. We are enjoying it. You know, we are the dynamic duo. People know that. Um, our training camps are not grueling. They're not like doom and gloom. We're having laughs. We're dancing in the gym. We're singing songs. We're training in underwear. It's fantastic. You know, I don't think there's ever been a boxing duo like me and him who have more fun while in a serious training camp for the heavyweight championship of the world or any championship of the world. We really do enjoy ourselves. It shouldn't be doom and gloom. Like I say, you should enjoy your job to the utmost. Um, and we really do. We really do enjoy ourselves and we enjoy every moment because we know we're very blessed and lucky to, to be having this moment in time. And today is our time. So we enjoy it. And you've had some epic walkout moments here in the States. Do you have something already in mind, something special planned for Wembley on the 23rd? Yeah, we've got a special ring walk um, entrance planned and it's going to be fantastic. It's going to be worthy of uh, the Wembley Stadium 94,000 fans. Any hints? Can't hint, but you're going to have to tune in to find out. <laughs> I tried. I tried, you guys. I tried. All right, TC Martin is up next. TC, you ready to go? Yes, yes, yes. Tyson, what's going on, buddy? Hey, buddy. Hey, um, so just to go on that point that you're talking about how much you enjoy every aspect of uh, the fight itself, the buildup, the training and, and everything. And like everyone's talked about, we've we've been so used to you with the banter. And I know that you love hyping the fights and you do like 
the mental part of it, you know, getting in your opponent's head and not having Dillian White there in front. Get, you got to give us a little bit, my friend. What if what if White was sitting right across from you right now? Or you were standing face to face. Give us a little. What would you say to him? You know, you never know what you're going to say or react to somebody until you're in front of them. People talk a lot of uh, stuff, good game. But when you're in front of a man, you're looking in his eyes and he can do anything to you at that moment. You really don't know what you do until you're faced with that situation. Um, now, I could just say I'd, I'd um, say this and say that, but in hindsight, I wouldn't really know un until I was there in front of Dylan Boy. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be this week or next week, rather. Right. So we'll find out. I, your last uh, few fights have been here in Vegas. And uh, has your training regiment changed a little bit? Because we know before you would train some there, then you would come and, and train some here. Uh, tell yeah. us w what that's been like for the last you know six or eight weeks. It's good. We always like to do different training methods. We've been playing a lot of golf for this this fight. We've been doing a lot of air driving the greens up on the golf course here in Lancashire, in on in Morecambe Bay, and I think that's really improved. Me right hand and, me, and putting the shoulder into the shot and really driving it through, driving that ball like four hundred yards. Um, it really does help, and we've been doing a lot of that. We practice a lot. We never do maybe shoot one hundred and fifty to two hundred balls a day as part of training. So we always do something a little bit different in every different camp. Um, yeah. Thank you, TC. Uh, up next is Matt from Into Boxing. Matt? Hi, Tyson. Thanks for giving us some of your time. Hi, Matt. Are you into boxing? <laughs> <laughs> definitely am, but I definitely am. Um, I wanted to ask you, this is the first fight where you'll have your dad present there in the arena. Um, how how pleasing is that for you, obviously, because you've had them trips away to Vegas and he's not been able yeah. to be there. How how pleasing is it to have him there with you? Yeah, it's good that my dad can come to the fights. and I think my dad may be on the undercard as um, starting. So <laughs> we, 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 he, he might be too drunk to see the fight by the time he gets <laughs> his first victory since the 90s. <laughs> so, yeah, he, uh, he might be absolutely blinded by the time it comes around. But, yeah, it's good to have me dad there, obviously. My dad's done a full camp with me this time. He's been in camp with me the whole time, watching over things and taking a few heart attacks in camp and all that sort of stuff. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's been good. We've, overall, we've had a good, uh, really good training camp, and I'm sure he's enjoyed it uh, to be a part of it where he's been a lot away for such a long time mm. out of the training I think the last camp he was at was in 2018 when I boxed last year in the UK so it's been a while since he's been through a training camp because I've had all the, the rest of the fights in, in America lately so it's been good job me daddy he's been a good athlete for the camp and he's kept everyone on the straight and narrow and finally the last one from me um, how big a role has Faith played in your comeback since you've obviously come back from the mental health struggle you know your relationship with God and obviously how has that played a part you know throughout this this journey it's always played a massive part in me without Faith we have nothing so um, I've had Faith from the beginning that I'd be heavyweight champion of the world and I had Faith when I was 400 pounds 28 stone that I'd regain heavyweight championship of the world so my uh, my faith is unshakable, um, and I'm 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 very 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 strong with the faith. So uh, it can never be taken away from me. You can take anything away from a man. You can take his money, you can take his fame, you can even take his freedom. But one thing you can never take is a man's faith until you kill him. So that's how she rolls. Thank you, Matt. Uh, a couple more here before we let Tyson go. Uh, Cole Winston, or Winston, excuse me, Cole. Hi, guys. Thank you. From Boxing Will Weekly. Good to speak to you, Tyson. Um, White is obviously a hard puncher, but you're no stranger to that. But do you think oh. after the shots that Wilder landed in your trilogy that any man can keep you down? No, I think when you're blessed by God like me, it's hard to keep a man down like this. You know, people have been trying to put me down my whole life. When I was a little kid, 10-year-old, I weighed about four stone in weight. I don't know what that is in pounds. Um, I was very light. I was skinny. And people would put me down then. People used to put me down in school because I was stupid. Didn't work. People put me down all my life because I was tall and lanky and fat. And then people put me down. Now. He's slow. He's chinless. He's this. He's that. Then you go and win world championships and they still put you down. And then you have a mental breakdown and they put you down even worse. 
and then you balloon up to £400 and they say, this man is finished. And then you come back from that and they start to put you down again and again and again. And the moral to the story is, life will always try and bring you down, but you should never ever give in to it and keep fighting and keep battling on because tomorrow's a new day and you never know what it's going to bring. And uh, anyone out there who's suffering and they feel down in themselves, the word is, yes, you can. You can come back from anything and you can be well again. So there we have it. Never let anyone put you down in life because you never know what you can achieve unless you try. That's awesome, Tyson. And my final question is actually for Frank. In your illustrious career and Tyson's illustrious career, where does this fight rank in excitement for a Fury fight? Frank may have gone. May have left. <laughs> Frank. George, Frank may have gone. Water. Well, on that note, thank you so much, Cole. Um, Tyson, we got to let you go. Your opponent is on the line getting ready to join in for what will be his first media experience. So your parting words to everybody that's joining us, to the fans, until you see them next week, fight week. Yep. Um, fantastic, guys. Thank you for all the questions and give Dylan White all my love and kisses. Yeah, I'll wish him a happy belated birthday for you as well. All no the best. <laughs> Thank you, Tyson. Appreciate all, you. All the best. All the best, darling. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.